excruciating, and today in homemade science, we're going to make some interesting patterns using light and sound. So, let's get started. Right now, let's get started. Okay, let's go. Now, the devices I want to show you today are fairly simple and they're easy to make. This piece starts with either a plastic or a metal can that has the bottom cut out, and it's simply attached to this small wooden board. Over the end is going to go this half a balloon, and it's going to be held in place by this rubber band. There we go. Boy, that was quick. And finally, this little plastic mirror is taped onto the surface. On the other end, I'm going to tape this laser down, and it's going to be on a slight angle. The tape's going to hold the laser button on, and I'm simply aiming it right for that mirror. Now, with a little bit of smoke, we can see the incoming beam and the outgoing beam. It's that outgoing beam that's going to form the patterns for us. Now, to use this, I'm simply going to aim that laser at the back wall and make sounds into it. Frequencies. Now, these might be a little bit hard to see in the video, so I think it might be better if I try these in the dark. Now, if I talk into it, and I keep my voice nice and low, I get better figures than if I talk higher. I can't see to get much up here. Let's go back down to la 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 la. Instead of me talking, let's try it with an electric piano. As would be expected, I'm getting patterns that are quite a bit bigger using a speaker, anywhere from two feet up to about six feet wide. We can also try it with a tone generator. Now the question is, why does this do this? Well, it starts with sound waves and the way sound is made. Now we know that sound starts with vibrations. And we can have any number of ways of making it. We have devices where it's simply the air that vibrates. We can even do it with electrical devices. No matter where the sounds come from, it's the rate of vibrations that determine the pitch. Now when a surface vibrates in air, one moment the surface has to move forward, which is going to cause the particles to move closer together. But the next moment it also has to move backwards, which is going to allow the particles to spread slightly further apart. So when a surface vibrates, we're going to get these alternating bands of closer together or further apart, closer together or further apart, as the sound moves away from the surface. This behavior is called a pressure or a compression wave, and we can see similar results in a slicky. Now when a sound is made into this chamber, the compression and rarefaction is going to cause this membrane to vibrate, but it's doing a little bit more than just moving in and out. I thought I'd try this on a larger scale, so I took a five gallon bucket and I cut it in half, and then I took a piece of black plastic trash bag and stretched it tight over the top of it. And if I talk into this, hello, I can actually feel the surface vibrating, but now I'm going to try and see it. 
All right, now we'll start by putting a little bit of sand on this surface. And if I make a loud noise, that should cause the surface to vibrate. I didn't expect that. Now, how about if we go higher, I'm going to try a whistle and see what that does. Wrong side. <laughs> wow, look at that. Let's go a little bit higher yet. Now I'll also try making sounds underneath it through this short piece of plastic tube. Now we were starting to see some very interesting patterns form on the top of this plastic, but my range is not too good and the quality is not too good either, so I think I'm going to switch from me making the sound to something that has a little better range. So we're going to put this speaker down and then put this over top of it and I'm either going to use a tone generator or the piano and see what kind of patterns we can get. Notice that we get simpler patterns with the lower frequencies, and as the frequency increases, the pattern becomes more complex. Now the patterns that form on this plastic do so for the same reasons as they do on the metal colony plates. These are the homemade plates that I showed in a previous video. And as you can see, the same type of patterns forms on these metal plates as we are seeing on this plastic membrane. These patterns form because the sound wave causes the surface to resonate. It has standing waves that collects sand in the places of very little energy, that would be our nodes, and where it's moving quite a bit, it keeps the sand from those areas, and that would be examples of antinodes. Now as we increase the frequency, those compressional waves become shorter, giving us more standing waves and a more complex pattern on the surface. Now let's try it on this surface to see if we can get the same results. I'm getting the same behavior here, just on a smaller scale. So the sand is showing us that the surface isn't just moving in and out. As the volume and frequency are changed, there are different patterns that are forming on the membrane. And the laser beam bouncing off of this membrane simply casts those changing patterns onto the nearby wall.
Well, with a little bit of light and sand and sound, we got some interesting patterns. Uh, I'd like to thank you for stopping in and come back and see me again. Okay, bye.